How did your passion for alleviating poverty develop and how has it been a common thread in your career? I think when I look at my career, yeah. um, in some ways it can be appear a bit disjointed. Um, uh, I mean, I've done economics, I've done journalism, I'm you know working in the nonprofit field today, but at, all through it, I see a thread for me that has been a way to connect my uh, passion and interest in um, actually in dealing with poverty issues. I mm -hmm. think that was what uh, really interested me as a graduate student, you know, having been born in South Korea, having witnessed in my own lifetime the transformation of my country from being um, poor, war ravaged, you know, recovering and really building up and to see what um, the country is like today. Granted, I left when I was six years old. I've lived all my life in America, but um, it's something that has had a huge imprint, I think, on sort of the way that I look at the world. And so even here, you know, in America, and, I, and you know, we, um, you know, think that there aren't as many problems as in, in, in developing countries, but really um, through the work that I've been doing with the Korean American Community Foundation, I think that we do see that this sort of pervasive model minority myth um, sometimes obscures uh, real social issues that um, are out there mm. and that there are people our neighbors, you know, who are living, who who are very invisible mm. and don't have a voice, are very marginalized, and so that has really informed the work that we're doing with the Korean American Community Foundation mm. as a funder and mm. as a resource to uh, nonprofit organizations that are serving um, the elderly, young people who are at risk, uh, women and children who are affected by violence, domestic violence, or trafficking, and uh, and the other kind of social issues that we are um, trying to tackle.